to this day project. It's Jane. And it's JV. And we're gonna find out what this is about. Yes, to this day project, it's a spoken word, right? Is that what someone said? I think so. A poem of some sort. But um, it's got 22 million views. A bunch of reactors have reacted to this like yeah. three years ago. Well, and so. it says, please share generously. So feel free to uh, share the video. Oh, I mean. cool. All right, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna react yeah. to it. And uh, see how this goes. Turn off annotations. Boom. Lego. Okay. Let's go. When I was a kid, I used to think that pork chops and karate chops were the same thing. I thought they were both pork chops. And because my grandmother thought it was cute, and because they were my favorite, she let me keep doing it. Not really a big Gosh. deal. One day, before I realized fat kids are not designed to climb trees, mm -hmm. I fell out of a tree and bruised the right side of my body. I didn't want to tell my grandmother about it because I was scared I'd get in trouble for playing somewhere I shouldn't have been. Oh, he was big. A few days later, the gym teacher noticed the bruise and I got sent to the principal's office. From there, I was sent to another small room with a really nice lady who asked me all kinds of questions about my life at home. Oh, oh no. I saw no reason to lie. As far as I was concerned, life was pretty good. I told her whenever I'm sad, my grandmother gives me karate chops. Oh, no. This led to a full-scale investigation. And I was removed from the house for three days until they finally decided to ask how I got the bruises. News of this silly little story quickly spread through the school and I earned my first nickname. Pork, pork chop. chop. Oh, no. To this day, I hate pork chops. I'm not the only kid who grew up this way. Surrounded by people who used to say that rhyme about sticks and stones. As if broken bones hurt more than the names we got called, and we got called them all. So we grew up believing no one would ever fall in love with us. That we'd be lonely forever. That we'd never meet someone to make us feel like the sun was something they built for us in their tool shed. So broken heartstrings bled the blues as we tried to empty ourselves so we would feel nothing. Don't tell me that hurts less than a broken bone. That an ingrown life is something surgeons can cut away. That there's no way for it to metastasize, it does. She was eight years old. Our first day of grade three when she got called ugly. We both got moved to the back of class so we would stop getting bombarded by spitballs. The school halls were a battleground where we found ourselves outnumbered day after wretched day. We used to stay inside for recess because outside was worse. Outside we'd have to rehearse running away or learn to stay still like statues, giving no clues that we were there in grade five. They tipped a sign at the front of her desk that read, Beware of the dog. To this day, despite a loving husband, she doesn't think she's beautiful because of a birthmark that takes up a little less than half her face. Kids used to say she looks like a wrong answer that someone tried to erase but couldn't quite get the job done. And they'll never understand that she's raising two kids whose definition of beauty begins with the word mom because they see her heart before they see her skin because she's only ever always been amazing. He was a broken branch grafted onto a different family tree, adopted. Not because his parents opted for a different destiny. He was three when he became a mixed drink of one part left alone and two parts tragedy. Started therapy in eighth grade. Had a personality made up of tests and pills. Lived like the uphills were mountains and the downhills were cliffs. Four fifth suicidal, a tidal wave of antidepressants and an adolescence being called pauper. One part because of the pills. 99 parts because of the cruelty. He tried to kill himself in grade 10 when a kid who could still go home to mom and dad had the audacity to tell him, get over it. As if depression is something that can be remedied by any of the contents found in a first aid kit. To this day, he is a stick of TNT lit from both ends. Could describe to in detail the way the sky bends and the moments before it's about to fall. 
And despite an army of friends who all call him an inspiration, he remains a conversation piece between people who can't understand. Sometimes being drug-free has less to do with addiction and more to do with sanity. We weren't the only kids who grew up this way. To this day, kids are still being called names. The classics were, hey, stupid. Hey, spaz. Seems like every school has an arsenal of names getting updated every year. And if a kid breaks in a school and no one around chooses to hear, do they make a sound? Or they're just background noise from a soundtrack stuck on repeat when people say things like, kids can be cruel. Every school was a big top circus tent. And the pecking order went from acrobats to lion tamers, from clowns to carnies. All of these miles ahead of who we were, we were freaks. Lobster claw boys and bearded ladies. Oddities juggling depression and loneliness, playing solitaire, spinning the bottle, trying to kiss the wounded parts of ourselves and heal. But at night, while the others slept, we kept walking the tightrope. It was practice, and yes, some of us fell. But I want to tell them that all of this is just a breeze. Left over when we finally decide to smash all the things we thought we used to be. And if you can't see anything beautiful about yourself, get a better mirror. Look a little closer. Stare a little longer. Because there's something inside you that made you keep trying despite everyone who told you to quit. You built a cast around your broken heart and signed it yourself. You signed it. They were wrong. Because maybe you didn't belong to a group or a clique. Maybe they decided to pick you last for basketball or everything. Maybe you used to bring bruises and broken teeth to show and tell, but never told. Because how can you hold your ground if everyone around you wants to bury you beneath it? You have to believe that they were wrong. They have to be wrong. Why else would we still be here? We grew up learning to cheer on the underdog because we see ourselves in them. We stem from a root planted in the belief that we are not what we were called. We are not abandoned car stalled out and sitting empty on some highway. And if in some way we are, don't worry. We only got out to walk and get gas. We are graduating members from the class of we made it. Not the faded echoes of voices crying out names will never hurt me. Of course, they did. But our lives will only ever always continue to be a balancing act that has less to do with pain and more to do with beauty. Wow. That hurt my heart. Can you say that name, Shane? Clay Exon? Mm. Wow, okay. Beautiful. That's crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of bullying that goes on in schools. It's so awful. It happens all the time. And there's like, you can't catch it as a teacher. You know, because it's so hard. Because they do it so underhanded. Like in high school, it's all on the internet. You mm -hmm. don't ever see any of it. And like the only time you do see it is when it's erupted because of the internet. And it's turned physical and yeah. stuff. And like... I'm going to teach her to, like, tell us everything. Yeah. Tell mommy and daddy so we can help deal with it. Because I don't want you carrying that burden. Yeah, a lot of it's through Instagram and Twitter now, right? Like yeah. DMs and, and like it's, Yeah. Or they'll post a picture Facebook or... and have cropped somebody out and be like, had to make this picture clean or some, something like that. Yeah. And then really everybody hurtful. knows about it. But it's just like, man. Yeah, we uh, did you deal with bullying as a kid? Yeah, like people bullying badly you. Badly bullying. Yeah, I was I was bullied. Remember, we saw my bully at the baby show. Yeah, yeah, I was bullied when um when I was I think grade two or three, I my parents moved and the neighborhood was like a white neighborhood, and me and my sister were the only black kids in the school. Who was and your brother? He wasn't. He was too young. Oh, okay. It was it's grade two or three. So, um, the kids would call me the N-word. That's crazy. And then, um, the leader of them called me the N-word. Like, just, I had a boiling point, and I beat him up. And then, since that, that day, I beat him up. Like, no kids call me the N-word. And then... And were you the new leader? I was the new leader. <laughs> yeah. And they all followed me around. And, I never did. Yeah. I never came back 
from it. Like, they were so mean to me. Yeah. And uh, how I got targeted was um, they were being mean to PETA, like, to my best best friend. friend. And then I stood up for her, and then they turned on me, and she was too scared to To stand up for me. Yeah. 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 Bullying, man. It sucks. Um, It's hard. We're going to try. Don't you want to know how I got out of it? Oh, how did you get out? You said you didn't get out of it. Like, I didn't get out of it, really. I just started running. And then I got... Because then you didn't have to go to recess because you had to go to practice. So track, she's talking about. Yeah, yeah. so I just kept, Not, I kept running. Yeah. Like, actually running. Like, I would run 1,500 meters or 2,000 meters, and I just all the time was running. Yeah. And then I got really good at running. So we have a 12-month, 12-week 12 12 week old. So we're going to try and, like, um, be there for her and uh, make sure she doesn't have to deal with get her to talk to us yeah i gotta talk to us try to if she's being bullied and then if she is being bullied i'll have to go to the school and i'll have to beat the kids up (laughs) (laughs) none of that i'm just but you come in and and you the the way that a lot of parents do it now too they go in you have to speak to the the teacher the principal and if there's a vice principal vice principal but you also secretly you lock eyes with the bully and just like one of these, like yeah. you catch them and you're like, <laughs> yeah, you give them one of those. Okay, a quick story. When I was a kid and I was being bullied, <laughs> I was being bullied at I, th- I think it was a different school. Some kid was uh, I was on the swing and he was trying to light me with a fire, uh, light me on fire with a with a, 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 a lighter. Yeah. He kept like trying to like light my shirt Kids on fire. Did that to me too. And then I went home and What's told my I went home and told my dad. And then my dad was uh, he owned a moving truck and he yeah. drove onto the grass, <laughs> on, like right up to the playground. Yeah. And he got out and he grabbed the kid and he told me to <laughs> kick the kid. He's like, kick him, kick the kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I kicked him in his shin. And then my dad threw the kid on the ground and we left. <laughs> <laughs> But that was like you can't do that now. No, he would go to no, jail. He would, he would go to prison. All right, so guys, um, go to the the link to the original video will be in the description. Go like the video, subscribe to him here. I'm gonna like it. Yeah, like yeah, it right, right now. now. Boom. Okay, just liked it. And then come back and then like our video, subscribe to us. We post videos like this all the time, so you don't want to miss it. And bing that bell. Yeah. All right. I guess thank you so, so much, much for liking, liking commenting, and subscribing. Catch you next time. Catch you next time. Here, peace. peace. If you like that video and you want to see more, go ahead and click that square button. And if you want to subscribe, click that circle button. Thanks for being part of Team Go.